DBSS review which fare the worst and which make 100% return. Hi, my name is Alan from Alan Wee Property. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the design, build and sell scheme or DBSS HDB flats. Again, DBSS in Topayo has been in the spotlight after they are sold above 1.4 million in recent months. Are they worth buying? and paying a million dollars for premium HDB flats. Some say it's worthwhile, while others say, might as well go buy private. My question is, can 1.4 million buy a decent three-bedroom in the same locality? Here, I will compare the 13 DBSS performance from launch to date. Again, do you want to make a guess which DBSS will outperform? Which one will still stagnant in prices? Why some of them are doing well? and why some of them are doing so badly. Let me share with you my thoughts through my lenses as we head over to the data. Firstly, why is DBSS? Design, build and sell scheme was introduced to the public housing market to offer greater choices and a wide variety to meet the housing aspiration of higher income flat buyers for better design and finishing. Under the DBSS, the developer tender for the land and enjoy flexibility in designing, pricing, and selling the flats subject to the relevant legislation and rules to preserve the character of public housing and ensure building quality and safety. Flats sold under the DBSS come with a 99 years lease and will be offered to buyers under similar HDB eligibility condition like flats developed by the HDB. Upon completion of the building, the developer will hand over the entire development site to HDB for lease administration and to the town council for maintenance of the common area and car parks. In the today's article back in July 2015, several DBSS projects come under fire for defects and they are called for the scheme to be shelved permanently. It was suspended in 2011 after a public outcry over the high price of the Century 8 development in Tampines. Before the suspension of the DBSS in July 2011, a total of 13 DBSS sites have been sold to date. As usual, we will compare the performance from the lowest to the highest. I will use the highest PSF prices within the price range and compare them to average resale prices in 2023. The first DBSS that performed the poorest was Pasiris 1 in Pasiris. It comprised 447 units and was launched for sale in 2012 at an average price of 389000 to 760000 Based on the highest launch PSF at 672 PSF and the average resale price in 2023 at 747 PSF, this means it has achieved a pathetic 11% capital gain to date or the 1% analyzed return since 2012. I wouldn't be going to the micro details such as the design or workmanship. This will only result in a long-winded video. I will zoom into the macro factor affecting its prices. I can only assume that the numerous BTO flats launched in Pasiris and Tampines in recent years have contributed to its lukewarm performance. The second poorest performer is Lake Vista at Yanqing. So much hype on the Jurong remaking, Jurong Lake, and back then, the HSR. Lake Vista is a shadow of itself and 19% capital gain to date. Why? If you are staying nearby, just take a look at numerous BTO flats that have already MOP. They are more spacious, better designed, and without any balcony or planter box. The surrounding area look more open and inviting. This in contrast to DBSS surrounding that are usually more crampy and with facility they are just the bare minimum. The next few DBSS mainly are Century 8 in Tampines, Adora Green in Yishun, Parkland Residence in Aukang, Travelis in Clementi, and Belvia in Bulldog Reservoir. They all share some common similarity. Firstly, they are the second wave of DBSS they are launched later from 2011 to 2012. Obviously, their launch price will be higher than those earlier DBSS. Secondly, there are also many HDB BTO flats 
launched in the surrounding area from the mid-2010s onwards. Most of these cheaper BTO flats have already MOP and are trading in the resale market today. These only offer resale buyers with more options. Should they buy a DBSS that is a little more exclusive since some of them have security gate at a lift lobby? But then, they have to compromise on living space. Thirdly, most of them are located in the outskirt area that is not within close proximity to good schools. This brings us back to the remaining DBSS, namely Park Lumion in Simei, which was launched in 2009. Its selling price then was 378000 for the 4-room to 575000 for the 5-room flat. Plus, the opening of the Upper Changi MRT station also helped to uplift its capital value. Park Central at Amokyo, City View at Boon Keng, the Peak at Topayo, and Natura Loft in Pishan are some of the earliest DBSS that are launched between 2008 to 2009. Back then, prices are still relatively lower compared to DBSS that are launched between 2011 to 2012. Another reason why they are doing well with a capital gain from 57% to 76% is mainly because of its proven location. Bishan, Topayo, Amokyo, and Bunkeng are popular residential estates. They are considered mature towns near good schools and within travelling distance to the CBD. Thirdly, there are not many BTO flats in the surrounding area. If there are, there are not many yet as most of them are still under MOP. But this will be a different scenario a few years down the road. Fourthly, what private property can you buy with a 1.4 million budget in this area? Most of the condos are already touching a good 2 million for the 3 bedroom. Frankly speaking, DBSS are mainly suitable for those that are priced out of the private property market, yet have the disposable income to buy something better. These are, after all, HDB premium flats. Lastly, if you notice, most of them are high-rise flats up to 40 storey high with spectacular view of the surrounding. The battle is really half won. Who will bother with a planter box, small kitchen to overly sized balcony? These are my observations of why they are still in hot demand and command hot prices to date. Here, the best performing DBSA to date is none other than the premium at Tampanese. Why? Well, this is the first DBSS to be launched back in 2006. Just take a look at the price from 138000 to 367000 I call them loud side prices. Sheer win one. Let's give credit to those owners that have the foresight and courage to commit to a new scheme back then. Most of them are profiting easily 100% return to date. In conclusion, what can we learn from the 13 DBSS? DBSS are no doubt similar to HDB flats. They are still relevant today for popular housing estate where there are limited alternatives such as private condos or MOP BTO flats. Their prices will continue to go up with strong demand and with limited supply. However, that cannot be said for other DBSS where there are plenty of MOP BTO flats for sale. Let me give you an example. Lake Vista at Yanqin. A four-room flat is going for 650000 whereas a five-room is going for 750000 Nearby MOP BTO flats are selling for five hundred fifty to 600000 for a four-room flat. Five-room are going for 650 to 700000 The BTO flats are generally larger in size and more affordable. This indirectly impact DBSS flat prices. Here, if you are an owner staying in Park Central, City View, The Peak, and Natura Loft, should you consider cashing out? That really depends on your housing plans. Prices will remain strong in the next few years until the MOP BTO flats flood the market. They will indirectly soak up the demand like those in Lake Vista. Anyway, the Office of the Public Guardian, a division of the Ministry of Social and Family Development, is offering free lasting power of attorney or LPA certification for Singaporean above the age of 50 to have better pre-planning. They will waive the $75 application fees 
until the end of March 2026. If you have elderly parents, you should encourage them to do so, so that they can plan their most important asset, which is their property, in the event they lose their mental capacity. With that, hope you have enjoyed this video. Please remember to help me like, share and subscribe to my humble YouTube channel. See you around soon.